Now, I've been struck by how little Kamala Harris has, uh, has, Kamala Harris has promised in terms of serious policy. It's been very policy light. It's her campaign really has been, I'm not Donald Trump. Trump has got a number of promises. He dropped a big one today on the campaign's last day to hit Mexico with huge tariffs if it didn't slow the illegal immigrants coming over the border into the US from Mexico. If they don't stop this onslaught of criminals and drugs coming into our country, I'm going to immediately impose a 25% tariff on everything they send in. Joe Hockey, how big an issue has this been for him, or really how effective? Well, it neatly marries two of Donald Trump's policies. One is to stop the illegal flow of people out of Mexico into the United States, which is a toxic issue right across the US. And the second is his love of tariffs, which I think is bad policy and will affect the American people more than it will affect Mexico. But it marries the two of them. And that's what Donald Trump's skill is. He manages to convey a message, not quite precise as we would expect in Australian political debate or in normal political debate, but he conveys a message very effectively. And he's done it again today. So it's no real surprise. Um, and, and, Andrew, I make this point, which people aren't really thinking about. Donald Trump is going into the election tomorrow with the highest polling numbers he has ever had, far higher than when he beat Hillary Clinton in 2016, and he's currently polling much higher than he did against Joe Biden in 2020. So if you take that into account, the pressure is all on Harris to match the vote that Joe Biden got in 2020. And you can see a number of cohorts where she is bleeding. She is bleeding votes uh, to Trump amongst black men. She is bleeding votes to Trump amongst Hispanics. And she is bleeding votes to Trump uh, amongst young people, which the Democrats never predicted. That's uh, most interesting. Well, last night um, we talked on the show about... Uh, well, I did anyway. Uh, Kevin Rudd, our ambassador, how he used to smear Trump as a, a crazy guy, a threat to democracy, dangerous, man of violence, etc., etc. But our Prime Minister himself trashed Trump seven years ago at the Splendour in the Grass Festival. Here he is. Like, how do you deal with Trump? Like, with trepidation. Yeah, but how, how do you get by? Like, what do you, how well, do you temper your language? Well, you've got to deal with. Uh who was elected, uh, so we have an alliance with the US, we've got to deal with him, but that doesn't mean that uh, you're uncritical about it. Uh, he scares the <laughs> out of me. Joe Hockey, the opposition say, says those comments were reckless and irresponsible. What do you call them? Well, clearly they were, but, I mean, for the sake of Australia, I hope that uh, if Donald Trump's elected... Uh, Anthony Albanese takes a different attitude towards uh, the President of the United States. It's, I understand where people come what? from in their criticism of Donald Trump. I mean, we've all done it, but, you know, that's not a great foundation upon which to build a new relationship. What is it that the left in Australia doesn't get about Donald Trump? I don't think it's just in Australia, Andrew. I think it's around the world. A whole lot of people uh, just don't understand that, you know, it, it, it's not a great love of Donald Trump. I mean, I keep saying this, you know, the Republicans out there are not uh, absolutely besotted with Donald Trump. They are backing him for his policies. The policies that represent their values, lower taxes, less regulation, independence of the nation, securing your borders protecting freedom, freedom of expression, freedom to vote, freedom to not vote, uh, freedom to be a part of a community. They're the values that are behind Donald Trump. Donald Trump has built a coalition that stretches from Elon Musk to the everyday white truck driver of America who never went to university and probably earned $70,000 a year. And it's all based on policy consistency right across the board. Whereas you said a little bit earlier, 
uh, Kamala Harris has built a coalition that stretches from Liz Cheney to Bernie Sanders, and it's only based <laughs> on I'm not Donald Trump. Only based on that. Extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, Liz Cheney to Bernie Sanders and AOC. You know, that's, that's, that's remarkable. And it's the only thing that unites them. And, and it comes back to the fact, what can you say about Donald Trump today that hasn't been said repeatedly, either by Donald Trump or his greatest critics, over the last 10 years? Well, uh, um, a fascinating analysis. I think uh, you've talked to quite a few Trump voters off the ledge, uh, Joe Hockey. What an election campaign it's been. Amazing. And I do think it'll be so consequential, the result. Thank you so much for your time. Anytime, Andrew, anytime.